Hey guys, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, what's up guys? And if you're returning, hey squad. So, before we get into the actual conversation, I just want to do a little bit of a shop talk with you guys, um, starting off with private readings. Um, I am still taking a little bit of a break for private readings. Um, I feel much better, <laughs> much, much better from last week. However, um, I want to give myself this week to get some videos and some content done for the channel. So that includes Zodiac readings. Um, I'm looking to have all the Zodiac readings for the month of August up by next weekend. Also, I want to do a spiritual mission check-in for the month for Twin Flames. Um, I did that last month for June, I'm sorry, July. And it was very good. It was very successful. I was very happy with it. A lot of you guys were very happy with it. So I want to do it again. Um, this time, though, I'm thinking I might want to do, uh, instead of doing like a spiritual mission check-in, I think I want to do a ascension check-in. Yeah? Um, go ahead and let me know what you guys would prefer if you want to talk about spiritual mission, like your path and where you are on your path or where you are in the ascension process, yeah? Not too sure which I want to do, so I want to leave that up to you guys. You let me know which would, which you would prefer. You can leave that down in the description box below. Um, yes, so I'm not going to be taking any private readings until starting the 16th of August, okay? Um, so if you want to, you are more than welcome to hit me up and we can schedule schedule you a private reading for you starting the 16th of August and moving on from there. My schedule is pretty limited when it comes to readings right now because I have so much shit going on. But um, yeah, so I, I am I am available for it. Um, I'm just taking some time for the week to get some content done for the channel. Yeah, uh, I think that's it. Shop talk wise. So let's. Let's get into the conversation for the week. I've got um, some points here I want to talk about. The first and foremost, the biggest message that is coming through for the collective right now is sovereignty. If you have been listening, following uh, Aluna Ash, if you've been listening to her, she's been talking about that a lot. Um, she is mentioning that, you know, we will need to be um, sovereign beings by 2020 because at that point, things are going to get... <laughs> get a little tough uh, manifestation-wise if you are not a sovereign being. What is being a sovereign being or what is claiming your sovereignty? It is claiming your space, okay? It is claiming your independence. Um, it, I very much see it as taking your power back amongst other things, but like at its core, yeah, it would be taking your power back and owning your power. So that also means owning responsibility for what you manifest in life, what you experience in life. Yes, taking responsibility for all of that because we are in fact the creators of our realities and we start our create or we start manifesting or creating our realities through our thoughts and beliefs and emotions. Yes. Um, now, with that said, uh, with all of the excuse me, all of the manipulation that has been going on for centuries, um, we have found ourselves trapped in these cycles of creating situations by default. Okay, creating things that we didn't necessarily want to be creating. I'm sorry, guys. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm getting distracted here. My my feather fell. I had it propped up, but I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. Hi. Um, We've been caught in these cycles of creating by default um, and being manipulated by beings within the, the fourth dimension, most, mostly the reptilians. Yes, they do exist. Um, but uh, there have been structures put in place like the Matrix that has kept us in this cycle of um, recreating these karmic cycles in order for, you know, these dark oriented, I'll say, these dark oriented entities and energies to siphon our energy, um, create more and more um, separation 
between us as a collective instead of uh, moving towards unity, which is what the ultimate goal is here, yes? So, how do you claim your sovereignty? Well, you can say a mantra. Um, I have some, I have a mantra that I have been saying. It was inspired by Aluna Ash, but then I kind of um, expanded on it myself. And then I came up with one on my own last night as, you know, like I was getting ready to go to bed and all that. And this one thing came out and I was like, whoa, that sticks. That's really nice. I'm going to keep it. So you can start with, well, first, the first thing I would do um, if you're working, when you're working on claiming your sovereignty is to, you know, get into a meditative state, um, start by doing this in meditation, uh, uh, focus on your breath, get relaxed, shield yourself. The first thing you want to do is shield yourself because the more you start try, uh, working on claiming your sovereignty, the more of a beacon you're most likely going to become for beings that don't want us to claim to own ourselves, own our reality, own our energy, and own our space, okay? So you definitely want to shield yourself. Um, I would also start maybe with a violet flame meditation. Now, be cautious because that can be a very strong meditation, okay? It can, be, it can bring about some really intense results. A violet flame meditation helps you to clear your energy, clear your space of anything that is foreign, okay? anything that is not your own. You can do a, a violet flame meditation in conjunction with um, calling your energy back um, and, you know, calling your, your energy and your pieces of yourself that have been fragmented. Um, you can start with the violet flame med and, uh, meditation to clear your energy out and then you can call your energy back in by just simply just by stating that you, you are calling your energy back from all space and time, realms and dimensions. Um, so I would start there. So violet flame to clear your energy and a uh, good shielding visualization. I like to visualize like a disco ball around me or um, just a seamless mirror bubble that uh, reflects anything that of malintent, anything that is not your own, um, reflects any sort of entities or blocks any sort of entities that are trying to enter your space. So start there, um, and then you can begin to recite this mantra. Now, this is the one that I did get from Aluna Ash. I did um, expand on it a little more, but it is, I am a sovereign being. No entity may enter my space without my express permission throughout all realms and dimensions and in all of space and time. I did embellish it on that one a little bit by, by adding in without my express permission. As I had been saying this mantra myself, um, it kind of developed that way for me in adding that without my express permission because I kind of felt like, well, when I think about it, the reason why I guess that came about was because there was a part of me that kind of was like, well, okay, um, I'm stating that no one can enter my space, um, but there are probably still some entities that are strong enough to circumvent that. That's not necessarily true because ultimately if you are stating your will in a certain situation, can anybody stop you? Yeah. Um, but then my, logically it just expanded. I wanted an extra piece of security to say, no, you can't enter my space. And the only way you can enter my space is if I give you express permission. Okay. So if you want to add that in there, I highly recommend that you do so. Okay. So I'll repeat it again. Um, I recommend this mantra. I am a sovereign being. No entity may enter my space without my express permission throughout all realms and dimensions and in all of space and time. Yeah? So then there is another one that came through last night that I'm really a big fan of right now. And that one states, I am a sovereign being and I am stepping out of the matrix. What? Y'all, my mind was blown when that came out last night. Like, damn. <laughs> I love it. I am a sovereign being, and I am stepping out of the motherfucking matrix. <laughs> yeah? Um, yeah. That's a good one. I highly recommend if you want to use that one, go right ahead. It's really resonating with me. Um, also, so when it comes to, you know, shielding yourself, you are absolutely encouraged to call on God, source, creator, the angels, your spirit team, whatever, to help give you a boost in protection. Yeah. So sovereignty, claim it kids. 
Next thing I want to talk about, ascension symptoms. I, I, I want to just briefly gloss over that because I know a lot of people are dealing with them right now and they're dealing with them for like most of you for like the first time um, or at least consciously for the first time. Sorry, I'm reaching for my coffee, um, which is cold by now, but that's okay. <laughs> so ascension symptoms, what are they? Um, pain, discomfort. A lot of the times they can feel like flu symptoms. Um, I know... When I first started going through a major heart chakra clearing and opening and activation, I was getting these really strong aches in my back, like like right up by right up by um, my shoulder blades, you know, like where your wingtips are, um, right in there. And it was like it was felt like there was a knot in there. It was like the most uncomfortable thing. And I mean, I tried getting a massage, tried getting someone to work it out, like maybe because I thought maybe there actually was a knot in there, and there probably was. Um, but that was mostly my heart chakra opening up and clearing. It started on one side, and then that subsided after a while. I mean, it was there for a long time. It was really painful. And then the other side act, uh, opened up, but then that one didn't last as long. I don't remember which one started first. I think it was my left, my left side, my left shoulder was first. Yes, that would be your feminine aspect. That would be your feminine side. Um, and then it was my right side. Now, the feminine side of me was, I, and it's so funny as I'm thinking about this, um, it's, this is like totally reflected in the Twin Flame Collective, whereas my left side, the left side of my back was in pain for the most time. That was the longest you know, op awakening, opening up, clearing, whatever. And then the right side happened and that was shorter in duration. And that actually <laughs> is reflected in the collective. The, fe the, the divine feminine goes through their awakening, but it's over an extended amount of time. I want to say mine was like, oh, like around seven years or some shit like that. Like, damn, you know what I mean? Um, and then the divine masculine goes through it and it's shorter in duration. It's on a more accelerated rate. So it's funny that I was thinking about that as I was meditating today, and I was like, oh, wow, that's a cool little mirroring effect. Um, what else? Teeth. I know a lot of the time um, during, my, during my ascension process over the past few years, my teeth would get really sensitive, and it would it'd just be out of nowhere, and then it would clear up. Um, flu symptoms. Um, I rarely, rarely, rarely do I ever get sick. And I've noticed that when I've had some situations in which um, I felt like I caught the flu or I had a bug or something, it was really just ascension symptoms. Um, and also that is your body purifying and, and purging toxins. You know, a lot of the time when you are purging toxic energies, um, toxic substances from your body, it'll feel like you have a cold. And that's just your body just, you know, getting that shit out of there. Yeah. Um, nausea, discomfort, just depression, like mood swings are definitely a, a, a symptom of ascensions, uh, a, a sens um, excuse me, an ascension symptom sometimes. Um, that's purging too, especially if extreme mood swings are like out of character, which for the most part, they really are for just about everybody. You know, if you're going through extreme mood swings all the time, that just means you're highly imbalanced and you just got to come into balance. But if it's out of the nowhere, really, like you go through a period where you're experiencing a bunch of mood swings, ascension symptom most likely, <laughs> um, purging, uh, balancing, stuff like that. Um, Kundalini, we've been talking about that for a while. Um, and that can be painful too. As the Kundalini rises up your chakra system, it's breaking through a lot of blockages and um, and all that stuff and clearing out negative energy. So that can be extremely painful, extremely <laughs> just uncomfortable. Um, and then once it actually gets clear enough, it'll feel smoother. You'll be able to raise your Kundalini um, just with your breath. I recommend breath work. Um, Again, I'm her biggest fan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep talking about her. But Aluna Ash, man, she's uh, she does Shakti Pot transmissions and all that stuff, and you know she's been talking about this stuff. I highly recommend that you guys follow her if you haven't already. I know most of you are. Um, but I've gotten to a point when it comes to Kundalini, I've gotten to a point where I can just raise it with one breath up into my crown chakra, and I hold it there. Um, and I've noticed sometimes like when I'm meditating and I'll do it, I'll raise it up and I'll, I'll focus on it. And I literally feel like the core of me. I feel a presence here in my third eye and then I'll start to sway like a snake. It is the weirdest thing ever, guys. It's so weird, but it's really cool at the same time. 
Um, so that's a good way of, of knowing, you know, that you've got it up there. And then from there, once you've got your Kundalini up there, you can use that space to start visualizing what it is you want for your life, yeah? And manifesting from that place. <sighs> so there's that. Finally, the last thing I want to discuss, or at least just want to touch on, because there may be some of this coming out in the cards anyway, but balancing between masculine and feminine energy. It is a real thing, guys. Like, it is really, really happening. I have been noticing it a lot for myself lately. Um, I have always been uh, feminine dominant in energy, um, but as I've been on this path lately and have been going through all of this stuff, my masculinity has really been leveling out and balancing out, and it's really an awesome thing. I've found myself becoming very protective of myself in many ways, um, and it's cool. It's in a way that I've never really been able to do that before for myself. Um, so I just wanted to touch on that, uh, bring that out there, um, mention that if you guys are feeling it too, you know, other divine feminines out there that are um, really getting in line with your masculine energies and divine masculine, you are, and I, this is something that has been coming out in the cards lately for a while. Um, divine masculine has really been working with feminine energies lately. Um, for the most part, it's not such a smooth ride. Um, and it's mostly divine masculine. If you're having trouble with your emotions right now, it's really because the divine feminine is coming screaming out of there, just screaming out of there um, and rising up to the forefront. And she's bringing a lot of, I want to say she's bringing a lot of baggage with her, but that's not even really the right term for it because she's just, she's bringing up all the shit that has been left underneath, swept underneath the rug. It's time to deal with that now. And so it's not going to be very comfortable. I can assure you of that. It is not going to be very comfortable for the most part. But I don't mean to scare anybody, but it's a necessary part of the process. In order to heal, in order to come back into balance, in order to become one, to become whole within yourself, you got to deal with the shit. you got to clean it up. You've got to iron it out. you got to hash it out. you got to heal from it. And that's uncomfortable. And it's um, it can be time-consuming. Um, but you'll get through it. We'll all get through it. it. It's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. Yeah? All right. So I guess that's it. So let's get into the cards, guys. Tweakly, tweakly, tweakly. <laughs> Twin flame weekly conversation. Yeah? All right, guys. I just noticed these are backwards. Oops. So, let's settle in. Everybody take a deep breath. Let's connect, guys. Let's connect. Please understand that this is a general reading. Yes, please take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. Um, as of a August 16th, I will be available for personal private readings. Again, if you want to go ahead and schedule that in advance, hit me up. Let's do it. Yeah? Um, this is a timeless reading. It, it is for this upcoming week. However, it does not have to be just for that time period. If you find this later on and it resonates with you, please take it. Yeah. Do what is best for you guys. Um, if it doesn't resonate with you right now, you can leave it behind. Come back to it later if you're called to. Maybe it'll resonate with you then. Yes? All right, guys. Let's do it. Hey, Spirit, <laughs> please make me a clear channel for the Twin Flame Collective. Please bring forward the best messages for the Twin Flames to serve the highest good of all involved. Please give us a clear and accurate representation of the energies of the Divine Masculine Collective, represented by the deck on the left, and the energies of the Divine Feminine Collective, represented by the deck on the right. And please show us how these energies are interacting within each of ourselves individually, and with each other individually, and as Divine Twin Flames. Ah, okay, so I'm going to start shuffling now. But I also, I did not explain um, exactly what the 
well, my process is for the um, Violet Flame Meditation. So actually, I'm going to do that first for just a second. Violet Flame Meditation. What I do is I sit, um, I get into a meditative state, and then I draw violet flame energy. It literally looks like a violet flame up through my root chakra into my heart chakra in an in-breath. On the out breath, I then push that energy from my heart chakra throughout my body, okay? And I'll do that a few times until my body is full of the energy. And I, often I'll start to feel a bit of heat with it. And then from there, I continue with the meditation and instead of just pushing the energy into my body, I then push it out into my aura. And I do it until I, I, I can see myself um, surrounded by a massive violet flame. And then at that point, I just sit there and let the flame just burn away anything that is foreign. Okay? Again, uh, be prepared because that can be a very powerful meditation. Okay? It really can't be. So just be aware of that. <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to make sure I did that for you guys. I, I, I explained that. You can go online... Divine masculine. You can go online and find, I'm sure, a ton of other meditations. Yeah? All right, Divine Masculine. So I'm shuffling your deck right now. Um, and as I was getting connected earlier before I started the, the video, I was seeing yellow. And I was also seeing, eventually I started seeing violet or purple. Um, and I really feel like there is... Uh, a massive crown chakra activation, crown chakra awak awakening that is happening for the Divine Masculine Collective. And as a result, that is influencing you, Divine Masculine, to re, re reassociate, realign your willpower, what it is you're actually going after in your life in the physical world. You are definitely receiving downloads from the divine, from spirit, from the Octorans also. Um, and that is helping you to awaken. Uh, and you are becoming more aligned with divine will rather than your your own personal will. Yes? Not that 22-22 on the counter. Not that, um, not that you're completely losing your own personal will. But at this moment, and it may not really feel like this right now, you may, um, you really may not even be aware of it too much. But on an energetic level, your willpower is now being realigned or associated with that of the will of the divine. And ultimately, that is your own will too. Because you are part of the divine, like everyone is a piece of the divine, so um, it's more a matter of releasing the egoic third, third, third dimensional will and aligning with the higher will of source, God, creator, whatever. And your higher self, yeah, your fifth dimensional self. Okay, here we go. We're good. We're good for you, divine, masculine. So, let me just cut the deck here. Alright. Divine Masculine, your energy is set. Divine Feminine, for you, I was picking up on purple, violet, and pink. So, as usual, Divine Feminine, you are intuitive. Um, you're probably, many of you are still going through uh, a, psychic, a psychic attunement. Um, uh, your psychic abilities are being sharpened, are being honed, are developing, are expanding. Um, you're, also, you're also really diving deeper into the understanding of what unconditional love is. And actually, I don't even really call it that anymore. Um, Betsy, <laughs> whom I love, I love you, Betsy, um, of Fearless Intuition, she actually, she explained to me, oh, okay, Divine Feminine, you have a flyer, she explained to me, ooh, the Ten of Wands, that, um, she understands, she thinks of it as true love, because ultimately we're still in a three-dimensional reality, and you can't really have... I mean, there's going to be some conditions in love. And you know what? That's that's cool. So I really see 
<laughs> All right. So I really, I'm seeing it right now as true love, um, divine love. And yes, you can call it unconditional love. Um, but you, divine feminine, this is this very much feels like an ace of cups situation where you're really starting to become more aligned with yourself, more in love with yourself, more appreciative of yourself, and you're starting to do things more for yourself that you didn't do in the past. And actually, that is lining up with this flyer that's coming out here, the flyer situation. We've got the Ten of Wands, which is upright, and we've got the Three of Wands, which is reversed. Um, so, Divine Feminine, you are really starting to become aware of the burdens that you've been carrying here in association, in association with this Twin Flame journey. Uh, many of us in the Divine Feminine Collective have just been waiting around, waiting around, waiting around for something to come through, which now is starting to look like it, it may never come through with the Three of Wands in reverse here. Um, and I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say it right here, right now, this is a necessary part. Woo, sorry. This is a necessary step in the journey. At some point, Divine Feminine, we are going to have to look at the situation around us and be okay with the fact that some, some element to what we want out of this journey may not ever happen. You know, you need to be detached enough to be okay with the fact that you may never reach union or reunion with your twin, with your Divine Masculine. You have to. That's just part, that, that's part of the unconditionally loving side of this. Because ultimately, in the 3D reality, um, you may, it may seem like you're separate. It may seem like we're all separate. But in reality, we aren't. We're always, we're all connected. We are always connected. Now, I know, I, I already hear it. A lot of you are saying, but, you know, there are a lot of, of, of readers out there that we all really respect and look up to that are saying that twin flames are going to be in union if you are and, and are even going so far as to say are going to be in union and remain in union in this lifetime that is fine that is not what i'm talking about here what i'm talking about is understanding uh being whole within yourself to be okay with the fact that this ship may never come in and why would you be okay with that? Because you, I'm hearing it, because you are a sovereign being. Because you are a whole and complete being. You do not need someone else to complete you with this Ten of Wands here. This is a this is kind of like a codependent burden that is still being carried, but is, is at this point is starting to really be released because you're starting to understand, Divine Feminine, just how much this is bogging you down. Why not lighten your load and just release, release, release the, the attention, the, the, the obsession, the focus on reaching union with your twin, your divine masculine, and free yourself to be happy, light, carefree, to do what it is you want to do with your life, to have fun with your life. Yeah? Yeah. That's really, that's really a big thing for the Divine Feminine Collective right now. It really is. And it lines up with what we what came out last week about <laughs> the catchphrase, the catchphrase from that video, bitch make your own tin. <laughs> there goes that feather again. But like, I mean, and it's so funny because I listened to that video a few times and each time I died like that, I loved that. That was great. That was if I do say so myself. But honestly, that's where we are right now, Divine Feminine. You have got, and and also part of this sovereignty is, is yes, you and your twin, you and your Divine Masculine, you are, you're two parts of the same being, but at the same time, you're still your own individual self in this, in this incarnation. And you don't have to let anybody a, a, occupy your space that doesn't respect you number one number two doesn't want to doesn't want to be balanced within the situation and number three anyone that you just damn don't want in there so releasing releasing this obsession this attachment to i think i really just saw the wheel of fortune as i was shuffling like that just popped out i mean yeah this cycle coming to an end of uh, being so obsessed with 
reaching union with your twin. No, reach union with yourself. Like, claim your sovereignty. You know what I mean? Like, I hope, I hope that's making sense. But, all right, cool. Okay, one more shuffle for you, Divine Feminine, and then we'll start with you. Okay. Divine Feminine Collective. All right. Okay, overall energy. We're starting with, hello, the Five of Swords in reverse. I like that. And actually, this is the Five of Swords in reverse. To me, I'm picking up some kind of Queen of Swords energy. This is why the Five of Swords is in reverse. Because we're done with, you're done with the drama, Divine Feminine. You're not going to do it anymore. This is also the Divine Feminine energy coming to arise in, collectively. And this is outside of the Twin Flame collective. This is like the Mass Human collective. The Divine Feminine is on the rise and is putting a stop to this Five of Swords energy that we have been stuck in for so long this competitive energy put on by the patriarchy. Yeah? That's great. Oh boy, we've got the Ten of Cups in reverse. We've got the Ace of Swords in reverse. And the Eight of Wands in reverse. My, my. Um... All right, so here's the thing. There is no communication right now, <laughs> Divine Feminine. I'm really kind of feeling like you don't even want to communicate anymore. I really think that you've gotten to, I feel like what I'm picking up right now for the collective, or at least a part of the collective that I'm channeling for right now, I feel like, Divine Feminine, you are so done. You are so done seeking truth and honesty from situations and people that are just not willing to own up, to fess up. Okay? This definitely could have to do with family, um, marriages, any sort of situation in which you've invested emotionally that is now turning out to be not what you thought with the Ace of Swords in reverse. Or at least it didn't turn out to be, it did, just didn't go the way you wanted it to. This could have been because of competition. This could have been because someone just didn't want to tell the truth, didn't want to be honest, didn't want to stand in integrity. What I'm also picking up here, especially with the Five of Swords, the Ace of Swords, well, with, with all of this, and the Ten of Cups, because all of this is in reverse. But what I'm picking up here is Divine Feminine, in many cases, you are leaving behind situations in which integrity is not a core uh, a, a core belief is not a cornerstone to the foundation of the situation. If it does, if it lacks integrity, you don't want anything to do with it. And you're not even going to fight about it. With the eight, with the five of swords in reverse, you're not even going to try and stand there and like be and try and like you know show shine your integrity and like try and influence people. No, no, you're just done with it. I'm, I'm really picking up a, some, some heavy Queen of Swords energy just with these overall energies right now. And Eight of Wands, again, is just saying you're not even going to try and communicate with it. It's, over, it's done. <laughs> it's done. I, you just don't want to deal with it. If it lacks integrity, it is not something you want to be a part of. And to be quite honest, that's a good thing. And that is an influence of this shift that's going on right now. And the Twin Flame Collective is definitely on the forefront of this. We are here and going through this process now, um, early, you'll say, before the Mass Human Collective, so that we can help anchor these energies and be of support for people when the third dimensional collective starts to make this change. Yes? Excellent. All right, so getting into your current energies, Divine Feminine, we have the Ace of Wands upright. Yep, Torchbearer, Inspiration. Insight, I'm hearing. Coupled with, yeah, Six of Pentacles. The balance between give and take. Again, if the situation lacks integrity, you want nothing to do with it, Divine Feminine. Excellent. Kudos to you. Don't even, don't even waste your time. If somebody is not willing to give, to, to reciprocate, next. <laughs> 
Next. I really am also picking up energies of feeling like wanting to wanting to start something. Start a way of giving back. This is, and especially in light of last week's message, this is some of you divine feminines, you are actually starting your mission work. The Six of Pentacles is a balance between give and take. I'm also seeing charity work here with the Six of Pentacles. And with the Ace of Wands, this is absolutely spiritually, divinely, and passionately guided. It's something that you're passionate about. It doesn't have to be charity work. It doesn't have to be um, uh, specifically spirit work. It doesn't have to be um, energy work, being a reader or anything. It's anything that you're passionate about. You want to do it, and you want to do it in a balanced and fair manner. With integrity, honesty, truthfulness, light. You want to do things the right way. In order to, number one, not just build solid foundations for whatever business you're trying to start or whatever. But to lead the way and show others that they can come from a place of integrity and be a successful business person. That's for some of you. That, that's really, this really feels very, very good, Divine Feminine. I'm very, I like that a lot. All right, more current energies for you, Divine Feminine. We have the star in reverse. Okay, so there's a little bit of a lack of hope. Feeling like you kind of might want to give up, but don't do that. Star in reverse is coupled with the seven of pentacles. See, you're lacking hope because many of you have just been waiting around. Is this ever going to happen? And what I'm picking up from the star in reverse here with the Seven of Pentacles upright is literally the universe just said, yeah, it's going to happen, but stop waiting on it. Stop focusing on it. Instead, focus on what you love. What is, what is your true fulfillment here? What is the direction you want to go in? Focus on that. Stop procrastinating. Stop waiting. You don't have to wait anymore. There's no more to figure out for the most part. You understand how you got to where you are, don't you, already? Okay. So have a little more hope and faith in yourself and get moving. <laughs> get moving. I mean, to, to be quite honest, Divine Feminine, look, in, the, in your overall energies, you've got the Five of Swords, the Ten of Cups, the Ace of Swords in reverse. You see, All of them in reverse. You see how you've been deceived. You see how you've been let down, how people have not been acting with integrity. And you already know that you don't want to fight that anymore. So with this seven of pentacles here, even though it's upright, what more is there to learn? What more is there to, to figure out? You know what I mean? And then with the star here, the star is in reverse. You, you, it's like you lack hope, you're lacking hope and faith to a certain extent. And so you're just kind of standing around, waiting around for a new a new answer, some new enlightenment to come. But girl, honey boo boo, honey boo boo child, that ain't coming. Why is it not coming? Ace of Swords in reverse. They have nothing to tell you that is going to be truthful or honest. And ain't nothing else to figure out. At some point, you just got to bite the bullet and move on. Follow what, follow your guidance. Follow what your heart is telling you. Yeah? Current challenge for you, Divine Feminine. Oh. Well, look, there's that Queen of Swords energy I was picking up on, but she's reversed. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Queen of Swords in reverse as your current challenge. Some of you might be having trouble accepting the Queen of Swords energy. Like, and this is exactly what I was just pick, what I was just saying. Now I gotta get we gotta see what this is coupled with, but this is already falling in line with what I was just saying here with the star in reverse and the seven of pentacles upright. There is nothing more for you to say. There's nothing more for you to do. They, whoever they are in this situation for you, because this is a general reading, they have no truth or honesty to give you. So what would the Queen of Swords do at that point? Just cut them out. But you see, the Queen of Swords is in reverse here. So it's almost like you want to stay and fight just for the hell of it, almost. Maybe so you can even get back at some people. Maybe so that you can try and like push your integrity on someone else. Girl, that ain't good. 
That's destructive. That is Five of Swords energy. Even though it may not look like it. Well, no. I mean, what do you mean that's Five of Swords energy? I'm, I'm, I'm honest. I'm being truthful. I'm, I'm showing my integrity. Yeah, so what? You really don't have to be in people's faces like that. Because if your integrity was really shining, you wouldn't have to do any of that shit. Hmm. Queen of Swords is coupled with... <sighs> the Three of Swords, upright. This is your current challenge. It's like you want to stand tall, stand firm as the Queen of Swords and just cut things out, but you can't. I'm really getting a lot of fighting back energy here. Your current challenge is not fighting back. Your current challenge is um, taking your losses and just moving on. Without any sort of clarity that you think you, you might need, closure, whatever. Because in these situations, Divine Feminine, these, the, the situation that you might be dealing with right now, if this is resonating with you, I can tell you right now, you're not going to get the closure, the clarity, the honesty, the truthfulness that you want, that you even think you need. Let me tell you, baby, you don't need it. You don't need it. You can move on, forgive, let go, and just take the lesson that you learned and move on with your life. Um, current energy is also fighting, not fighting back. Challenged with not fighting it back. I'm sorry, your current challenge. There are some of you that feel like you really want to cut somebody up right now because they hurt you. And that is completely valid, Divine Feminine, but it's destructive. It's self-destructive. Somebody just was not being honest. This could be your twin. This could be with your Divine Masculine. Could very well be. But this also could be the final push for you to really move into detachment. Detachment enough to just get on with your life and focus on your mission instead of this connection, instead of reaching union or reunion. You got to focus on your mission right now, Divine Feminine. Yeah? Okay. Upcoming energies for you. Four of Wands in reverse with the, oh Lord, the Emperor in reverse. Okay, so obviously there's your Divine Masculine. And the Divine Masculine came out with the Four of Wands, the Union card. Um, all right, well, I'm picking up. It's, it's not really... Union really isn't... Probably isn't coming anytime soon. I don't know. Uh... Honestly, what I'm getting here with the Four of Wands and the Emperor in reverse, I feel like the universe is saying to you, look, Divine Feminine, this is coming. This is going to happen. You got to be patient because there are blockages right now. Also, what I'm getting here, Divine Feminine, is... Um, you working on this balance with yourself, you coming into union with the divine masculine within. In your upcoming energies, this is, this is something that you're working on right now. This is a process that's happening. It's already been happening. Um, but for some, for most of you, it's going to become consciously a, a, a conscious thing now. You're going to start to experience and understand how, um, your energies are balancing out in this way. Okay, so yeah, it may that union, physical union with your twin in the 3D world may not happen anytime soon. I'm not one to go into timelines. Um, but also keep in mind that that can't happen until you're balanced within. And so this is what's happening right now. You're get you're you're starting to really gain that balance within. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Divine Masculine. 
Let's get into your energies. Starting you off with the Page of Swords in reverse. Seeking. This, I, honestly, I'm feeling a similar energy for the Divine Feminine here, whereas there's nothing more to understand. There's nothing more to seek about the current situation that you find yourself in. At this point, you just have to move on. Also, some of you that may have been watching, uh, keeping tabs, like maybe on your Divine Feminine or something, maybe you can't anymore, or maybe you just stopped. It's entirely possible. Some of you might have gotten blocked. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, okay. So you can't watch your Divine Feminine anymore, and it is got you all up in a headspace. All caught up in your head, feeling like you're all up in prison. But also, for those of you that this is connecting with on the level of there's nothing more that you need to learn about the situation, yeah, there's nothing more you need to know about it, but with the Eight of Swords here, it's like, okay, well, now what do I do? Yeah, Divine Masculine, now what, you, now what do you do? Because now you have a de decision to make with the Two of Wands. It's like you know exactly what you need to do and how to do it. You're just too afraid with the Eight of Swords. Or you feel like you can't. You feel like you're trapped. It's like, it's like you know exactly what's going on around you. You've figured it out already. Okay, with the, with the Page of Swords in reverse, you've figured it out. You know exactly what's going on around you now. But that, it's almost like that's even worse. Because you felt like you couldn't get out of it before, and now that you understand more about it, you feel like you really can't even get out of it. That's not true. It's an illusion. With the Two of Wands here, you know exactly what you need to do. It's just about making the decision and actually following through with it. Mm hmm mm hmm mm hmm And then we have the Nine of Pentacles in reverse. Some of you are working on regaining your independence, but a big thing that I'm picking up on right now is many of you feel like you can't do it on your own. You can't make it on your own. I feel like a lot of you Divine Masculine right now, you're really feeling your codependent issues, your, uh, your, your codependency issues. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean, this doesn't just mean, you know, you can't do it on your own financially. It could, it could also be you have been such a provider and a, a, and a, care, a, a provider for people that Losing these people that you have been providing for is terrifying for you. I know exactly how that feels. I know exactly how that feels. Now, I am more of a feminine energy, so I'm the one that wants to like stay home. <laughs> and this is so stereotypical, but well, maybe not as stereotypical as I'm, as I'm making it out to be, but I'm very much the one that wants to be working from home, taking care of the kids, um, making sure that everybody's fed, house is clean, that kind of shit. Um, but then also, as I've been ma balancing my masculine energies, I've also kind of been the one, the, the, the provider, the one that wants to go out and make shit happen for the family, right? And when I left my, um, my marriage, it was a big adjustment for me to not have people to care for or provide for, other than just myself. That was a big adjustment. So for some of you Divine Masculines, you're starting to realize or starting to get into the energies of if you don't have someone to provide for other than just yourself, you don't know what you're going to do with yourself. That's an adjustment. Don't worry. You'll get through it. But it's also not the end of the world. Because honestly, if there are things that you need to leave behind right now, it's for a very good reason. Okay? Getting into your current energies, we're starting you off with the Six of Cups. Nostalgia, Be the past, childhood healing even, <laughs> with the Queen of Cups in reverse. <laughs> so 
you're feeling nostalgic about situations with your divine feminine. At this point, she's probably really cut you off. And you don't know what to do about it. You're all up in your head. The Queen of Cups here is also talking about your energy. Okay? This is a depiction of the divine feminine within you coming screaming out. And with that, she's bringing up all these memories, all these nostalgic memories from your childhood. Things that need to be healed from your childhood. Also, situations with your divine feminine. And you're starting to see a lot of the journey from the divine feminine side now, rather than just the masculine. I know for me, I have been seeing things from the masculine side now. However, for me, it, that is tempered with the understanding that I've gained from the feminine aspect of it. But for the divine masculine, for some of you, for most of you that I'm channeling right for right now, you're seeing things um, from the feminine side tempered from the twisted masculinity that you were dealing with in the past or that you were acting from in the past, which is, <laughs> which is I'm sorry to laugh, but which is making this that much harder for you to handle, for you to deal with. Not only are you dealing with a surge of emotions, but at the same time, you're starting to be faced with the, it, with the nasty truth about the situation. <laughs> But ultimately, this is generating healing because this is not just connected to what's happened on the Twin Flame journey between you and your, your Divine Feminine. This is actually directly connected with what you experienced as a child, what you grew up in as a child, what the programming that you accepted or that, you, that, that was projected onto you in the form of twisted, mas twisted masculinity, which is the place that the patriarchy operates from currently. Okay, moving forward. Two of Pentacles. All right, so you're trying to remain balanced. You're juggling, that's for sure. You're probably juggling finances, business. You might be looking for new business opportunities while still working in a current situation. Two of Pentacles is coupled with the Seven of Wands. So I definitely see that you're working on um, setting some new boundaries, Divine Masculine. You are also coming to understand the boundaries that you've set for yourself in the past and how you can reshape them. I'm feeling like there's a lot of chaos in your life right now, Divine Masculine. Um, and you're trying to balance with this two of pentacles here. I see that you're working on balancing, um, what's happening, keep remaining balanced with what's happening here with the queen of cups in reverse and the six of cups upright. All of this emotional shit that's coming out to the forefront is really kind of throwing you off. This is not something you're used to. And so as a result, you're really trying to remain balanced. And your guard is up. You could be extremely guarded around people that you used to be very comfortable with in the recent past, like your friends or family members or whatever, and people might be noticing that. I'm literally seeing some of you reacting in very highly defensive ways. Um, most, And I'm going to be honest with you, it's probably for a good reason because you're starting to understand things differently and you're starting to see how people around you have not been the wisest, we'll say. And so you'll, you'll have a defensive flair and I'm literally seeing some people around you like being taken aback, like, whoa, where did that come from? And they may not understand where it came from, but you know exactly where it came from. <laughs> and it's not, and with the seven of wands here, this is upright. So you have every right to be defensive, most likely. It's not like you're just biting people's heads off for no, for no reason. No, actually, you're starting to see things much, much differently. And so you've got your guard up. You're, you're re-identifying your boundaries. 
You are realigning things within your physical existence. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just being, I'm being drawn back to um, the Page of Swords in reverse with the Eight of Swords and the Two of Wands, both upright. Some of you really feel like you've walked yourselves into a prison. Because of uh, mental, lack of mental maturity. And I'm not saying that you were, um, that you're like not intelligent or anything. What I'm saying is um, lack of maturity when it comes to communication, when it comes to seeing the bigger picture, when it comes to things like that. Your actions have now led you into a prison with the Eight of Swords, and you have to figure out how to get back out of it with the Two of Wands. And that's directly connected with what's going on here in your current energies. I really see, uh, for, for the most part, Divine Masculine, just to give you, I guess, some guidance on how to handle this, it's going to have to start with your immediate surroundings. You're going to have to start putting people back into a different alignment when it comes to how they associate with you and where your boundaries lie. Yeah? All right, cool. Your current challenge, Ace of Pentacles in reverse with <laughs> the Queen of Swords. And she's upright here. And it's so funny because it's right, it's literally falling right under the Divine Feminine's challenge of the Queen of Swords in reverse. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, it's, just, it's just funny how this is mirroring, how we're mirroring each other right now. Divine Masculine, your current challenge, and the first thing I heard of, I heard when the Ace of Pentacles in reverse came out was like feeling like you have no new start. You have no way of starting over with your Divine Feminine. And then here comes the Divine Feminine as the Queen of Swords. Because this is how you're seeing her right now. And to be quite honest, you're seeing her correctly. Now, for some Divine Feminines, the Queen of Swords is reversed here. Um, and it's reversed in that she's very hurt and wants to hurt, probably wants to hurt you back in a, in a similar, if not greater way to how you've hurt her. But for others, for the others of the Divine Feminine Collective, the Queen of Swords in reverse is not cutting the bullshit. But here for you, Divine Masculine... You have the Queen of Swords upright, and you really are, your current challenge is getting her, finding a way to act, to, to start over with the Queen of Swords, with your Divine Feminine. This is also finding a way to start over with your own internal feminine energies. The Queen of Swords here is saying no new start until you get your shit together until you get your act together, until you start acting from a place of integrity. That's what the Queen of Swords Upright is saying. No new start until you find your integrity and you use it. You're, you actually, Divine Masculine, you could be dealing with um, financial hardships surrounding this. If you have built some sort of business on a certain image that is not who you truly are, that is not from your place of personal integrity, you're probably dealing with some hardships right now. There could be a blockage in your flow of abundance, business, whatever, material gain. And there's going to continue to be a blockage until you Cut the shit and be honest. No new start for you. 
And I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm not trying to be a bitch, but that's literally what I'm hearing. As I look at this Queen of Swords, the Ace of Pentacles in reverse, that is lit exactly verbatim, word for word, no new start for you. Until you act with integrity. Ouch. Upcoming energies, Divine Masculine. Mm -hmm. The Hermit. It's very good. It's very, very good. And it's upright, too. So this is going in within. This is going within and finding your truth, finding your inner light, finding your integrity. Coupled with... Ha-ha! <laughs> the Ten of Wands. So we have some more mirroring now. Because the Ten of Wands was a flyer for the Divine Feminine. Um, but absolutely, Divine Masculine, your upcoming energies are going within. Finding your inner light. And allowing it to shine. Going within and starting to really understand the burdens you've been carrying. and working on releasing them. Actually, f for some of you, you're gonna be forced to go within because of these burdens, is what I, I just saw that. Like, things are just gonna get so heavy, the universe is just gonna keep piling shit on you until you have no choice but to go within and figure things out for yourself. Go within and figure out who you truly are and what you truly wanna do here Go within and allow your personal truth and your integrity to shine forth because that is literally the only way you are going to be released from these burdens. Once you step up and step into your power, which is what we were talking about last week, once you step up and step into your power, that is when you will be able to strip all of these burdens away with the Ten of Wands. And I just remembered that the Emperor came out for the Divine Masculine last week in the upcurrent, upcoming current energies. And now we have it here for the Divine Feminine. So whereas the Divine Masculine was really starting to step into his power last week and release himself from, I just heard self-deprecating situations, but also deceitful situations. Now the Divine Feminine is stepping into her masculine power and in essence wiping the slate clean. I'm also hearing the message of no new start for you with the Divine Feminine when it comes to the Emperor in Reverse and the Four of Wands in Reverse. Because this is masculine energy coming forward within the Divine Feminine and putting her foot down and saying absolutely not. You will get no new start until you step the fuck up. That is the protector energies of the masculinity coming through for the Divine Feminine. No way. And so now, Divine Masculine, you are going to be forced to find your inner light. Unless you take it upon yourself to do it. This doesn't have to be a tower moment, Divine Masculine. Now, we don't have the tower here, but if the universe is going to force you into it, guess what you're going to get? A tower moment. Doesn't have to be that way. You could start this right now. Bite the bullet and just be like, all right, let's go figure this shit out. Yeah? Okay. Let's get into the animal spirit. Spread. Okay. Four, the Divine Masculine. Whoa, hyena. Well, gee, that's fitting. <laughs> For the Divine Feminine. Yee, fire ant. That's fitting, too. Holy shit. Uh, shadow dynamic. Peacock. 
and the illuminated dynamic. Illuminated dynamic. Woo! Okay. <laughs> well, it's elephant, but then also look at what popped out again. The Phoenix, y'all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How you doing, Phoenix? <laughs> okay. Divine Masculine, you have Hyena. There we go. Okay, we both got fire here, masculine and feminine. There's a lot of fire and air. Um, hyena, fire ant, and elephant are all fire. Peacock is air. Interesting. All right, Hyena for the Divine Masculine. Humor, wit, sarcasm. The hyena personality is a jokester and crowd pleaser, but below the surface there are unfulfilled dreams to be realized. When the hyena card appears, it's time to reflect on your reliance on sarcasm and humor to express your truth. Are you using jokes to hide old resentments in relationships or to mask things you feel uncomfortable discussing? What would happen if you took your goals seriously? When in balance, hyena is charming, witty, and fun to be around. When out of balance, hyena is scrappy, petty, and suspicious. To bring into balance, one must practice some sobriety. Yep. It's kind of fitting, isn't it? I mean, both of these are fitting because fire ant, I mean, hyena, for the divine masculine, this is directly speaking to this mental prison you find yourself in with the eight of swords here in your overall energy and this needing to make a decision with the two of wands. And this defensiveness, um, seven of wands and two of pentacles in your current energy. Yeah. Trying to keep balance, but still being really defensive. And this trying to keep balance could be you acting in this way of um, using heart, sarcasm to like make light of the situation when in, you're like dying inside. That is heartbreaking, actually. I just got really, holy moly. Oof, okay. Divine Feminine, you've got Fire Ant, and I personally, I, I, I don't really like seeing this card. This is directly connected to this Five of Swords energy here that's here for you, and this Queen of Swords in Reverse energy. Fire ant. Oh, let me hold it up for you. Aggression. Rigid thinking. Following orders. Fire ant energy flares up without us noticing. It's the force that attracts us to people and situations that feed our imbalances rather than those that counter them. See, that? that is exactly what I was trying to say with the Queen of Swords in reverse and the Three of Swords. Your current challenge, Divine Feminine, is to stand in your Queen of Swords energy and just cut out the shit. That absolutely could mean your Divine Masculine. If your Divine Masculine is still in this stage of not being honest, not being integritous, not, not acting from integrity, excuse me, being a shit starter in some cases, some of you are choosing to just keep going with it. Not only just keep going, but fight back. But this is not a good type of fight back. This is tit for tat. This is eye for an eye. You hurt me, I'm gonna hurt you now. No, Divine Feminine. That is so self-destructive. That is absolutely Five of Swords energy. Okay? Gossiping and blaming are a few indicators that misaligned fire and ant energy is at play. You may also find yourself, quote, stewing on a person or situation, only making things worse. Well, yeah, I understand that. I spent all of last week stewing over one specific situation. And I couldn't understand why. Now, it took me some time to get out of it. But I was starting to get frustrated with myself because it's like, dude, like, can we let this go now? This is doing nothing but making you upset, right? How can you break free from the drama and cool down? Fire ants are surprisingly sensitive. 
Don't pretend the heat isn't getting to you. When in balance, fire ant is thoughtful and disciplined. When out of balance, fire ant argues, uh, experiences excessive heat, and gossips. To bring it to balance, one must take some solar solo time or go for a walk at night. It wasn't last week. I'm sorry. It was the week before. It was like the week of the full moon that I was just stewing over this one situation. Last week was a bit better. I started finding myself getting out of it, but there were still some periods where it would come flaring back up again. But I mean, you get it, Divine Feminine. Yeah, this could be with your Divine Masculine, with the Ten of Cups here in reverse, but it also could be with a situation that you have already been in. This could be a marriage. This could be a karmic relationship. Um, this could be family members. Yeah? But I am picking up an energy of some of you are just not fighting back you don't care about getting any sort of truth out of the situation. You just want to move on. Just release it and let go of it. You don't even want to argue about it. You don't want to hash it out. You don't want to communicate with the eight of wands in reverse. You're just done. You are just done. Okay. Ooh, wow. Lots of heavy stuff coming out here. Uh, shadow dynamic is peacock. Inner beauty. Compassion, assimilator of anything. The beauty of the peacock is unrivaled. It's easy to think it comes from the plumage, but the secret of the peacock is that the beauty resides within and extends outward indefinitely. This adept, adept creature can assimilate or, quote, digest all experiences in life, so it does not harbor resentment, conflict, or past pain within its psyche. The peacock type is extremely rare. Not many of us have reached this advanced level of acceptance of the self and others. When in balance, peacock is kind and confident. When out of balance, peacock can't, quote, digest situations. To bring into balance, one must meditate on the navel. There's that meditation again. But this is, I mean, this is absolutely resonating with both sides, with masculine, divine masculine and divine feminine. At some point, you're just going to have to rise above. You're just going to have to take your experiences for what they are in terms of the bigger picture of things and just keep going. There isn't always a need to fight back. There isn't always a need to retaliate. Often, retaliation probably really isn't the best idea. Okay, finally, the illuminated dynamic is elephant. Here we go. <laughs> elephant, unstoppable, auspicious, wise. The elephant is argu arguably the most auspicious figure in the deck. Like Ganesh, the elephant represents immense wisdom as well as good fortune. It is said that the great elephant is the destroyer of obstacles. So if this card appears when you feel, quote, stuck, rest assured, the path will soon become clear. To add to the mystery, the elephant is also known to create obstacles in order to steer us in the right direction. Trust this gentle, noble creature. It illuminates the way with, it, with the light of self-knowledge. It illuminates the way with the light of self-knowledge. When in balance, one has one-pointed focus, is generous and loving. When out of balance, one misunderstands fate. To bring into balance, one must just practice trust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, guys. I just want to end this reading with some Lightworker Oracle. Close out here. Whew. An hour and 15, 14 minutes. 144, one, 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 four, zero, four on counter. Actually, it was 11 because we're at an hour. Anyway. <laughs> All right. I just want to get some Lightworker Oracle guidance to close out the reading for us here. Best messages for the Twin Flames for this weekly conversation here.
best message, please, spirit. Oh, no, that's too many. That's way too many. That's way too many. Best message. Um, just one card. Just one message. Because we're almost, we're already over an hour long. So let's, one best, one card, one message for the Twin Flames for this week. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to do it this way. Mm -hmm. There it is. Card number 15, grounding. All right. I'm going to read from the book here. You know what? Actually, and this is so perfect. We all need to be grounded right now. We all need to get grounded. Divine Feminine, you need to get grounded too so that you can see things as they truly are and just move forward. Divine Masculine, you need to get grounded too so that you can break yourself out of this mental prison you find yourself in. And this is this boils down to a six. It's number 15. One in five or six. <laughs> it's a minute and 16 seconds. I'm sorry, an hour and 16 minutes in. Um, but... Six is the number of harmony and balance. So the only way that you're really, either of us, divine masculine or divine feminine, are going to be able to balance out and bring harmony back into our lives is if we ground ourselves. And grounding yourself absolutely means being honest with yourself about what you're facing. Brutally honest. Yeah? Okay. I'm going to read from the book here. You long for the free and open worlds of spirit and light, yet you also yearn to experience the healing power and divine joy of sacred sound and living color. You are meant to bring joy, beauty, and comfort to this world to share the spiritual light. To do so, you need grounding. Your dreams want you just as much as you want them. Grounding helps you bring your dreams to life in your world for the benefit of many. When a reminder comes from higher guidance to ground oneself, it is a loving encouragement, never a judgment. Grounding is a spiritual version of remembering to call your mother. <laughs> it is a chance to check in with what is happening in your physical life and make sure you are giving appropriate time and energy to what really matters to your heart. It is a chance to appreciate the beauty of the natural world and love in your and the love in your relationships. It is a chance to make sure your spiritual work is being applied in your life in ways that feel good for you. It is a chance to speak or create a colorful flower offering. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow. It is a chance to speak your prayers rather than only think them. You might even dance them or create a colorful flower offering for your altar or sing them for your, from your heart. We are guided to grind, ground ourselves when there has been an increase of light in the head. This can occur, occur through meditation, prayer, or conscious connections with spirit. You might be on fire with ideas and inspiration, but struggling to express them all practically. You may even feel congested or tense in parts of your body where the energy needs some help to flow. This is a sign to move in a way that feels freeing, strengthening, and expressive, and to add healthy relaxation and exercise into your lifestyle to allow for healing to occur. Then the light can move through your entire body, bringing vitality and helping you translate your ideas to, into your reality. Yeah, that's all I'm going to read from there for now. Okay. So there it is, guys. Grounding. That's going to be the title of this video for both Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine. Grounding. Let's get grounded. Because just to be quite honest, um, we're all going through some serious downloads and activations. Divine Masculine, you're definitely going through a crown chakra activation awakening, um, which is helping to open your the rest of your centers in your body, um, which is helping you to actually start to, to face your emotions if you've been hiding from them. And so you definitely are going to need grounding there to help you deal with it. Yeah. Divine Feminine, you are, I mean, you're getting lots of downloads, attunements, psychic activations. So yeah, you're going to need some grounding too. 
definitely gonna need some grounding. So there it is, guys. I love you all so much. Thank you for tuning in. Um, and I am available. I'll be starting to do private readings as of the 16th of August. So if you want to get a first in line, a head in line, whatever, go ahead and email me. We'll get you guys scheduled, yeah? Okay. I look forward to connecting with you guys for the Zodiac readings. Um, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next weekly conversation. Yeah? Take care, guys. Take... Let's try that again. Take care, guys. Much love. Bye.